Let's look at limits of piecewise defined functions. Let's suppose f of x is equal to x minus 1 whenever x is less than or equal to 3. And f of x is equal to 3x minus 7 when x is greater than 3. Let's look at part a. Find the limit as x approaches 3 from the left. Okay, so I'm looking for the limit as x approaches 3 from the left. As I approach 3 from the left, think about this for a second. Let's say that we have a coordinate plane. Here's 1, here's 2, here's 3. As I approach 3 from the left hand side, I'm going through values that are less than 3. So I'm looking at values that are less than 3 values of x that are less than 3. So I'm going to use this piece of my function for f of x. So I'm going to say the limit as x approaches 3 from the left of f of x will be using x minus 1. Well that's going to equal to, that's just a polynomial, so I could sub in 3, 3 minus 1, which is 2. How about b? Limit as x approaches 3 from the right of f of x. Think about 3 here. If I'm approaching from the right, I'm looking at values that are out here are greater than 3. So I'm looking at x values that are greater than 3. So I'm going to use this piece of my function. So I'm going to say that I see limit as x approaches 3 from the right of 3x minus 7. Well, that's just a polynomial, so I can sub in 3 for x. So 3 times 3 minus 7 is 9 minus 7, or 2. So what about this one? The limit as x approaches 3 of f of x, in general, not from the left, not from the right. Well, what do we say in section 1-1? For a limit to exist, the left and the right end limits must approach the same number. Are my left and right end limits approaching the same number? Why, yes they are. So this limit exists and it's at number 2. So let's see, let's sum up what we learned so far. We learned if we're taking a limit of a polynomial. What do we do? Sub in the number basically. Okay, evaluate the polynomial to number. What about the limit? As x approaches some number, I guess I should put as x approaches a, of a rational function. What do I do? I look at the three conditions ahead that I'm supposed to memorize, right? And go about it that way. Think about, think about three conditions. Remember we said one of them, the denominator is equal to zero, but the numerator is not, and so forth. How about the limit as x approaches a of a function with a radical? Now we try to evaluate that radical first, just how it is. And if we don't get anywhere, we rationalize. Rationalize the numerator, denominator by multiplying by the conjugate. And then what else did we deal with? We dealt with piecewise just now. What do we do with piecewise? Well, for piecewise, we basically look, okay, what is that value of x? And if we're approaching 3 from the left, we would use that part. If we're approaching 3 from the right, we use that part. So with piecewise, we basically do what? We determine which piece we have to use for which part. All right, something I want y'all to think about before y'all go on to the next section is the absolute value of x. Absolute value of x. Next section, we're going to look at this quite a bit. We're going to say that that's equal to 
x or the opposite of x. And we're going to rewrite this as a piecewise defined function. Absolute value of x is equal to x if x is greater than or equal to 0. Absolute value of x is equal to the opposite of that x value if x is less than 0. I want you all to play around with that. Put in numbers and see if that makes sense and so forth. That's really going to help you out with the next section.